stream right now. What is up? What is up, YouTube and TikTok? Big shout to everybody in the building. Big shout to everybody pulling on up, liking the stream. My name is Messi and a grab by Eduardo. Big shout on TikTok. We're live on TikTok. We're live on YouTube right now. And I think that this is going to be a fire stream. We got RJ on YouTube, Krista on YouTube as well. Ski bro, the Hebrew. What is up, my brother? How are you? How are you, man? How is everything going, brother? Blessings in the name of you. Messiah Yeshua. And we got the high heel purple shoes you know we've got toby a singer in the building as well ladies and gentlemen we got shireen in the building big shout to everybody pulling up let me know if you can hear the comment section hear the uh the the sound effects and all that stuff we got people pulling it up i fear no evil what is up what is up we got a couple of people in the back willing to have a conversation so that's going to be fire what are we talking about tonight ladies and gentlemen as you know this is something a little bit different we don't normally do this at radar apologetics but i thought it would have been pretty good to go ahead and have this conversation about Yeshua being the Messiah. We're going to be addressing a couple of different issues. Jesus is God. Jesus is in the Old Testament, the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. We're also going to be doing that the Oral Torah is not divine. We're also going to do that the New Testament is Jewish or two comings of the Messiah is Jewish. So if you disagree with some of these topics or you some of the uh, those that are part of what we do, then you can go ahead and ask to come on up and we're going to make this thing happen. So if you are part of the people that we always see, as you can see, we've got the comments for YouTube on the screen and we've got the comments for TikTok that just doesn't look as clear as I would like it to look. So I'm going to try to see if I can make it a little bit clearer for you guys. All right, there you go. That's a little bit. Ah, that's not better. That's not better. All right, so let's go up here. Let me try to fix this one more time. If not, I'm just leaving normal. Just leave it like that. All right, so there we go. Number one gift badger given to the person with the name Jesus Christ. We appreciate you. Big shout out to you in the building. Shmup wants to come up. He could come up, but it's all good. I just want to say that we are giving all praise and glory to the name of Messiah, Yeshua. We're going to pray that Yeshua, Jesus, will be magnified. Will you join me? Big shout out to everybody in the YouTube. Um, you guys know what to do. Avino Malkinu, Father King, Lord, I bless you. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Father, that I can come before your presence to magnify you, Lord, to glorify you, to lift up your name, Father. I give you glory and honor, praise in the name of Messiah Yeshua. And I thank you, Lord, that we can come together and talk about this thing. So let's go ahead and let's got to try to get some people up in here. Let's see who's up in the building. We'll do it one at a time. If the people want to come on up, La La and Sala is going to come on up. And let's do this. Uh, so YouTube, you know what to do. Get those likes up. Let's show some love. We got 30 people in the building. Let's get the likes up to the watchers so we can make this thing happen. So what is up? What is up? Uh, your name is La La. How are you? Welcome. So I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Does YouTube hear you? I don't hear you. Hmm. I do not hear you. Hold on. Hold on. I don't hear this person. There you go. Are you there? Yes. I'm oh, okay, here. cool. Can you guys on TikTok real quick? TikTok, can you hear my uh can you hear my uh, sound effects now? Can you hear that? Yeah, right. All right. Can you hear the music, TikTok? Let me know. Let me know. Daniel! Let's see yeah, this. Flavor. <laughs> All right. High heel. That, that's, that's the messianic movement. Messianic movement. All right. Cool. So we're up in here. Lala, what is up? How are you? Um, so let me see. Talk real quick. Hello. 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 Yeah. So we can hear you over here. So you are coming through to uh, YouTube. Can you hear her? Can you hear her? Give it a give it a talk real quick. We're trying to get over to YouTube as well. YouTube, give us a give it a a, what's, a, a sound check, Lala, if you could. Hello, 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 hello. All right, yep, you're going through. You're going through. All right. So what is up, Lala? What's what's up? Um, I I just wanted to ask a question, right? Um, yeah. do you do you disagree with some of these topics up here? Actually, I don't. Cool, cool. I mean, I believe I believe that this is God. Uh huh. Cool. I also believe, I also believe that he's a triumph God. Yeah. All right. Um, so I I really don't disagree, but I just have just one question. Do you believe that the Messiah came in in seventy A.D.? Um. Do I believe the Messiah came in seventy A.D.? No way. I believe the Messiah came before seventy A.D. and he gave himself in about the year thirty three. Thank you, brother Scott, for the super chat. Appreciate you, brother. So so you believe in the second coming of the Messiah, right? Yeah, for sure. I believe there's a second coming of the Messiah. Can you can you elaborate just a little bit before I, I get off? Yeah, sure. I mean, is that what the question you were thinking about? 
Yes, because they keep saying that Jesus Christ is not coming back. Yeah, sure. Let me help it out with you. Came, he yeah. already came back. I gotcha. And, you I gotcha. got it? Okay, yeah, let me flip it. this camera real quick. So we have we have within the scriptures two um, notions of the Messiah, right? And so let me see if I can fix this a little bit better. All right, so YouTube, you should be able to see it all right. And then actually we'll do it like this. Actually, I can do this. All right, so... Let me make this real nice for you, okay? So we have this idea in Daniel 7.13, right? So the must, right, Daniel 7.13, okay? Um, I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man was coming, and he came up to the Ancient of Days. And then also we have not just the Messiah is coming with the clouds, but he is also coming lowly riding on a donkey. Look, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He's just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey. So we have these two different comings of the Messiah, one where he's coming with the clouds and the other one where he's coming on a donkey. This shows us that the Messiah has to come two different ways. He has to come with the cloud and he has to come on a donkey. First, he comes lowly on a donkey. And then again, after that, he will... Yeah, Zechariah 9, 9 already happened. We're waiting for the Messiah to come back, to come back, raining upon the clouds and the clouds, and that he's going to come back. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, brother. Yep. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, yeah, we got this thing open. You know, when we look, thank you so much for coming on in. All right. And so as we look at this thing, you could just kind of let yourself down if that's all right. Yeah, thank you. Yep, yep. So if we look when we look at this thing though, right, and we're looking at the uh, the Messiah, right, the Messiah within the sources of Judaism, they firmly believe that there's two comings of the Messiah. Now I don't want to give away all the sources right away, but we'll see if we get some rabbinic Jews to pop on up and they can do it. So Shmup wants to come up. We'll see what he wants to talk about, and we're gonna to try to keep it to people who disagree. We're gonna let King Drake up. He's Drake up. He's the homie, and then we're gonna have Shmup up. Uh, Shmup, what is up? Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. I just have one question for you. Are you. Do you disagree with some of these topics? Um, I wouldn't really call myself a, a religious person, so I can't agree or disagree. Uh huh. Okay. I just wanted to ask, uh, what is your like beef with the uh, Rabbi uh, Tova Singer? What uh, are you Jewish? Uh, yeah. I like. I wouldn't call myself Jewish religiously, but ethnically, I'm Israeli. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm Israeli. So, I'm All right. Uh, I Thank just want you, to know. I just want to send a shout out. Thank you, Allison, for that $20 super chat. Appreciate you, sister, for the love. Thank you so much for holding us down. So, you were saying you, you're, so you're from Israel, right? You're a religious Jew. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a religious Jew. No, no. Okay. Were well, you brought up religious in yeshiva? How were you brought up? No, really not. I didn't live in Israel. Mm -hmm. I uh, I was born there. Mm -hmm. um, when I was around two and a half, we came to America. Okay. So, you know, and both of my parents uh, are not religious. My dad is a complete, a a complete atheist, yeah. doesn't believe in anything. Okay. And uh, my mother also uh, not atheist, but just doesn't fall into the, I guess, thought of Judaism. Yeah. How, do you, how do you feel about it? Eh, I mean, right now I'm kind of looking into it, yeah. and then I found out about you guys, the uh, Messianic Jews. I yeah. think you call yourselves. Yeah, for sure. People, like Jews who believe in Jesus. So I looked it up on YouTube, you know, because the first place it's easy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I saw a few of you guys um, talking to people in like uh, Yerushalayim. Yeah, like so be it, guys. Um, Jews for Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, Jews for Jesus. Um, it was just kind of confusing because, from what I understand, yeah, like Jews and Jesus, you know, don't really go hand in hand. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult thing, you know what I mean? Because when we go to the Brich Hadashah, right, the New Covenant, mm -hmm. I'll show you this passage with you. You know, we have in uh, Acts twenty one twenty, and I'm going to put it on YouTube. It's easy to do on YouTube instead of going back and forth, but... People can go ahead and look it up. Acts 2120. They're talking about all these uh, people among uh, the believers of Jews, right? And when they heard it, they began glorifying God because many of the Goyim, many of the people from the nations 
were coming into belief of the God of Israel through Yeshua, right? Through his disciples in the book of Acts. And Acts 21, 20 says something really interesting. When they heard it, you know, the Jewish believers, they began to glorify God. And they said to him, you see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who believed, and they were all zealous for the Torah. Right? So I think the idea of Jews not believing in Jesus is something that has transpired in history, but there have always been Jewish believers in Yeshua. Well, there was, from what I understand, Jewish converts. You know, the original um, people who followed Jesus were Jewish. For sure. And then they converted. Well, I, I think some of them converted to Christianity. I think some of them died before it was fully established. Do you have a, do you have a, a verse in the New Testament that says that? What that, that they, they converted, converted to Christianity? Yeah. Uh, no. Again, I'm not yeah, religious. It's I'm, fine. It's all good. All I'm, all I'm saying is that we are often told these these ideas, right? We're often told these things that these Jewish believers they were Yehudim, but now no more, right? They're not Jews anymore, right? They've become these uh these um Christians now, right? Um, and what we don't understand is that Christian in Greek is just Christianoi. It just means that they became like followers of the Christ, which is the Mashiach in Hebrew. It's Christos. So they were called Christianoi. It's just a Greek way of saying Meshachim. So, so that's all it is, right? They didn't convert to become Christians. They were Jews all their life, and they followed, they followed the Judaism of their day and their time. So what do you have to say about Christians? What about Christians? Like they follow, you know, I guess the cross, you know, I, they follow a different set of Christianity. I, I mean, how many different types of Christianity? Catholicism? Yeah, uh, I, I uh, think, I think there, you know, there's a lot of... Look, and I think there's a lot of different segments of Judaism, even though even though the, the Jews are a lot smaller of a number, we do have a wide variety in what Judaism believes, right? You know, if you had a Chabad person, and you had a Reformed Jew, and you had a conservative, and then you had the Orthodox, and you had the modern Orthodox... Then between them, you had the uh, Labadvichers and all different Chabad sects. They would all disagree about how to don tefillin, which are the phylacteries. They would disagree about tzitziot. You know, they would even say, shivanim panim la Torah, that there's 70 faces to the Torah, right? Um, when, there's dis when there's differences of opinion, they say these and these are the words of the living God. So I think Christians can have differences of agreement of how they do things, right, in their local community, how they worship, even days that they do, but they still believe the core, right? Like you would say about Judaism. Yes. Right. So that that's what. So it's not really an argument against us because we're, there's just more Gentiles, right? So there's going to be more different expressions, but those that hold to the core, they're gonna they're gonna be the same. They're gonna believe like the same, right? Yeah, I guess you know. Right. So the whole premise of any type of Christianity is Jesus being, you know. God or the Messiah or the Son of God, yeah, or all three, yeah. So you have an issue. What's what's the issue that you have with some of these some of these things that are up here? Um, do you, I clearly mean, you don't believe in the oral that, Torah, right? You don't believe in the oral Torah, right? The Talmud, right? The Talmud, That's the yeah. oral Torah. Yeah, you didn't go to Yeshiva, uh, right? No, I never went to. I just okay. kind of grew up speaking Hebrew, and yeah, you know, got some bits from here and there, like Barmitz and whatever. Yeah, that's cool. There's not wrong with that. All right, so check this out. You know, we have uh, so if your issue is with the the Mashiach being God, right? But you say Judaism, you know, is well, no, no, no. my problem isn't the Mashiach being God. It's okay, how can God say I will never be a man and then be a man? Well, we have an interesting passage inside the Bible. Well, you know Hebrew, right? There's a passage where it says that Adonai is a ish milchama Adonai Shemo, right? That the Lord mm -hmm. is a man of war, but yet he is the Adonai is his name, yod heh right? In Exodus. And what's it? Not, I think, doesn't it say he's not a man of war, he's a man of justice? No, it's uh, Exodus 15 too. He says, I'll read it to you directly out of the Hebrew, okay? In Hebrew or in English? I'll read it to you in Hebrew. Okay. It's uh X it's Shemold fifteen three. And look at what it says. We'll go down here. Um it says Adonai Ish Milchama Adonai Shemo. Markerot Paro Vachelo. Yeah. Rambayam, right? So the idea and I've read a couple more words to show you there's not more really about that passage, but these ideas of God not being a man, 
and God being a warrior, and Ishmael Chama, man of war, Exodus 15 and Numbers passages, don't say anything about his ontology or what God can do. Of course, we agree God in his essence, right, is not a man. He's not a man. This is not, this is not an issue. This is not an issue. We agree. But can God take on flesh? And do we see this inside of the Torah? I guess so. Right? So that's the question, right? So we go to Gen. Do you have a Torah with you right now? Do you have a uh, let me see if I can find yeah. one. It's just easier to not have to change the screen back and forth. And then if you have it in front of you, and I have it up on YouTube as well. So if people want to go over to YouTube to see the verses, you can see the verses there. What's up, YouTube? How you doing? What is up? Thank you guys for showing up and coming on through. Got 59 people in the building. Big shout to y'all and big shout to my brother coming up. What's your name, bro? Oh, me? Yeah. Is ben. Ben? Ben, yeah. nice to meet you. Now you're older, here. Like, oh. So well, yeah, it's all good. We want to we want to make more more we want we want to help make uh more Christians, you know, Hebrew literate. So it's okay. You know, I mean it's all right. We can talk a little Hebrew. We just translate what we say after, that's no problem. Yeah. All right. I don't I don't uh, you know necessarily practice Hebrew as yeah. much as I would if I was in Israel. Yeah. But you know, if I'm speaking to my mom or dad, yeah, if grandpa, not, yeah, man. If, yeah, then you get what, bro, if you don't talk it. I get it. I get it. Happen, yeah. It happens in every culture, right? So you're Jewish born? Yeah, my family are Jewish. My family are Banyan Usim. I went back to Judaism when I was 19 years old. So, of course, the Orthodox mm. don't consider me Jewish, right? But I'm ordained as a Messianic rabbi by other Halakhic Jews. All right. Right? So, uh, I did a, I I did a, a return. I did a return to Judaism uh, in a Messianic way, you know, and I returned to Messianic Judaism, to the faith of my fathers, but I was, I'm ethnically Jewish. I have Jewish heritage. All right. All right. So let's look at this passage. Look at this text real quick. All right. But whether, you know, but this doesn't really change the text. Right. So Genesis 18, one. OK, it says the Lord appeared to him, Abram, by the oaks of Mamre while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. So if you look at the Hebrew, what's that verb? Right. What's the first verb? I don't know. Well, the first verb is Vayera. Right. You have the Hebrew or the English. I have the English one. Yeah. I have it pulled up on the computer. No, that's fine. It's Vayora in the Hebrew, right? That he appeared. Okay. Nifal form means God was seen, right? Because God appeared. Okay. When you keep reading this passage and you go through it, right? And you go through it, I want you to look at this thing. Go to Genesis 18 8. So you read, you can read the whole thing and spend your time with it. I'm not trying to, you know, bombard you with passages. But what's so crazy and so insane is that he took curds and milk and the calf. You know, this Abram, which he had prepared, and he placed it before them, and he was standing by them under the tree as they ate. Oh, you got to swipe down on the, uh, you got to swipe down on the screen. I don't know why, but I got to Yeah, you got to swipe down. There you go. Are you back? Well, I'm going to drop you off and then come back. You just can't uh, drop down and then come right back, all right? Because you can't, you can't, uh, you can't leave the app and then come back, right? Uh, because then it like does this loop. What's up, pro life, Chloe? So yeah, so you know, while you're listening to this, brother, um, Benjamin, the idea is that God appears to Abram by the oaks of Mamre, right? And we'll read it more, you know, just while you're getting back on the app, and I'll bring you right back up again. Shump, uh, and then we got Chris Claus in the building. What's up, brother? And then we'll bring Shump back. Okay, yeah, you just can't leave the app, brother, when you do that because then it'll act up on you. All right, you'll get a loop. So here we have the Lord appearing to Abram by the oaks of Mamre while he was sitting in the tent of door. He lifted up his eyes. He saw the three men who were coming beside him, right? He said, my Lord, if I found favor in your sight, please let a water be brought, piece of bread. So these three that are before him, I'm presenting to you that one is yod That's what I'm saying. So Abraham hurries. He prepares food for them. These people eat. In order to eat, they have a body. Two of the angels, two of the malachim go down to Sodom and Amorah with Lot to get Lot out of there, right? But, and Abram stands before the Lord, standing before him. And the Lord keeps talking to him. Why are there two angels, two malachim that go? Why? Because one of them was Hashem, Yad And he had a body, so he was able to eat. Oh. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, so... Again, it, I'm... Yeah, go ahead. I'm kind of new to, uh, I guess... Religion 
seriously. Yeah. So it might like kind of make sense, kind of doesn't. Yeah, I. But think, I guess I just have to read more through it. Yeah, I think what's important and what you have to do that's really important is that you have to, you must, must, must. This is very important for what you need to do. You must allow the Torah to speak. Right. I can take you through the deity of Messiah, the complexity of God's unity, that there's no Torah Shabbat Pei in the sense that we think about it from giving the God Moses on Mount Sinai. I can show you that the New Testament is thoroughly Jewish, all these things, right? But a lot of these, uh, the belief that I have is not because the New Testament came and said it. The belief I have is because the Torah tells me this about God. And even more so, I'll give you another one, the rabbinic sources some of them, not all, I'm not going to lie to you, some of them agree with what the New Testament is saying about what the Messiah, Messiah should be like. Okay. I mean, the the whole reason I got into uh, this messianic type of thing, like to understand Jews for Jesus, is because the guy I told you on YouTube. Yeah. And then uh, the way I found you, was uh through uh rabbi tova singer mm -hmm. and i saw you have had like post on him and or like done some type of dj remix of his of <laughs> listen his before you say anything was it good or not good you didn't like it <laughs> uh, i'm not really into dj but it was awesome. all right okay no problem no problem so so and, go ahead my yeah. fault but no go ahead i just kind of wanted to know what like why Why do you always try and like talk to him? Yeah, I don't have a beef with him, right? Um, It's not a personal beef. My thing is, is that I firmly believe that Tobia Singer is, um, he's not representing what has been the historical belief of, of Judaism all the time, right? And he'll say things like Judaism teaches X, Y, Z, when really there are many voices within Judaism. What if I told you that Rambam gave two comings to Moses, right? not just Elijah, and that the two comings of the Mashiach is even a rabbinic idea. And you would never hear Tovia Singer say that, though. I haven't heard any rabbi say that. Okay. What if I read to you a source from Rambam's father that talks about Moses getting two comings? Um, yeah, read it. Go ahead. Yeah, I sure. know about that. I'm actually a big fan of Maimonides' uh... I'm studying philosophy myself in nice. college right now. And you know, and yeah. so here goes the thing, right? When Moses wrote his Moray Nevuchim, his uh, treaty on philosophy, they burned his books at first. That I did not know. Yeah, because his stuff was so philosophical. They even, some even call Rambam like, uh, not technically, but they would say he's something like an Apichorus. An Apichorus. Yeah. Right? You know, why? Because of that. Now, now he is, right? So I, I'm going to have to share my screen just because this is important to do. And um, YouTube, I'm not going to be able to switch everybody off. I'm going to find a better way to do this. But I just want to show you this source and see how good I can make it. But we have this principle in the Midrashim, right? And uh, let me see if I can give myself the, see if I could uh, change the layout a little bit on YouTube. Click on, your, click on yourself on TikTok and give yourself the. How do I do that? Like that? Yep. There you go. Look at this, y'all. I'm getting good. All right. So YouTube, you're going to have to take my word for it, right? And check this out. Look at what it says here. And, you know, I could, I could cite the sources to anybody. This is Ruth Rabbah 5. So we have these sources within Judaism that are midrashic, and they have these ideas and these notions. And look what it says. It says, Rabbi Barachia said a name of Rabbi Levi, Rab Rabbi Nima talking, okay? They say, like the first Redeemer, so is the second Redeemer, and then it goes on to say, I know it's hard to see, but anybody needs to send me an email, info at radarapologetics.org. It says that, um, and it goes on to say, how did the first Redeemer reveal himself and then return and was hidden from them? How long was he hidden? It goes on to say three months, right? So, and then it goes on to say that since the first Redeemer, like the last Redeemer, who's the last Redeemer? It's the Messiah. Therefore, Moses was hidden and then revealed. The Messiah is going to come, be hidden, and then be revealed. And this is the Midrashim. Right? And let's go to something else. And I'll show you the letter. This is Rabbi Mamon Ben Joseph. This is the father of Rambam. Okay? And he writes something here. And I'm just going to read it to you because, you know, it's, it's too hard to, to do this with the screen like this. So I'm going to find a better way to do this. Guaranteed. But 
Let me just keep reading. Let me read this to you, okay? Let me make it big for myself, and I'll read it to you. About this idea of uh, Moses being sent again and being brought back. All right, let me pop it open for you real quick. And then people aren't going to be see, able to see it, but I'm going to read it to you. And if you need the source, you can find it on, uh, on JSTOR, okay? Let's go down to this. Rabbi Mamon's letter, he says, And when we say his death, right, we must not liken it uh, to the death of other mortal men. His corpse remained pure even in death, speaking about Moses, right? His eyes did not grow yep. dim. Its moisture did not abate. Speaking about the death of him, right? So it says that, you know, he, and look what it goes on to say. Um, there are some who say that Moses, our master, is not dead, but stands and serves God in heaven. This is from Sota 13b. And he says, and this too is our opinion. And after he presented his intercession on our behalf, he recited his blessing. And when he finished them, he said farewell, he ascended, and his creator hid him till the time shall come when he will be pleased with the world and he will send him back to assist the king who is to reign in the strength of God. Now, we read in Ruth Rabbah that the first redeemer is like the last redeemer. So if Moses gets two comings, shouldn't Mashiach get two comings? I mean, if you put it that way, I, I guess so. Yeah, and it's not me saying this. this. This is rabbis, right? This is not New Testament stuff. They're saying that Moses came, he was hidden, and then and we can even go to the Torah and show this, but the rabbis teach that Moses came, he hid, and then he's going to be revealed to the people. Mashiach, the Messiah, Jesus comes, he disappears, and then he's going to return again for his people like the first Redeemer is the last Redeemer. This is all the rabbis. This has nothing to do with New Testament stuff. Then why did it, from, you know, Maimonides... Uh, I can't quote a word for word, but I'm pretty sure he said Christians falsely as ascribe the marvelous powers to Jesus and may his bones be ground to dust. So remember, I'm not saying that Rambam believes that Jesus is the Messiah. I'm saying that the things that rabbinic Judaism thinks the Messiah will do, Jesus has done. I understand that, but if they're going to talk about him in this, if they're going to talk about the Messiah yeah. in this way, couldn't they have even acknowledged Jesus? Well, that's my that's my point, right? My point is, is that, and this is a big premise and a, and a way to think about this thing. I think it's really important for you. And I want you to think about this as you're thinking about it and praying about it and trying to really think about religion. I want you to notice that the sound bites of 21st century rabbinic Judaism do not match the sources. And this is the question you need to ask yourself, because if Rambam is saying Jesus is not the Messiah, but yet his father teaches something that lines up with the Messiah, there, there's, there's a disconnect there. And on YouTube, they dropped the verse. Can you me? Yeah, I can hear you. And they dropped the verse. That's Oh, yeah, you can't leave. You can't leave the. Uh, you can't leave it and come on in, brother Chris Claude. Do you want to drop anything for us? Well, I was listening to you, brother, and when you were reading that quote, you said that when Moses comes back, he would aid the king. Mm -hmm. We know that the Messiah would be the king. So would this be saying that Moses would be aiding the Messiah? Hundred percent. Yes, sir. And if and if so, this also proves Jesus being the Messiah because this would show the second coming of the Messiah, because the Messiah had to come before the destruction of the second temple, and Moses is going to come back at the end of time to aid the same Messiah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And look, and what we're seeing is is that, and this is a big thing, the important thing about that the sound bites of twenty first century Judaism do not match these sources of rabbinic Judaism. And therefore, what could be, what, what really is happening here is that there's a disconnect. And so I don't, I'm not coming to you saying the rabbis, uh, Ben, believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, Jesus is the Messiah. I'm saying that the rabbis believe many of the same things the New Testament writers believed. And all that proves is that the New Testament is, is in line with Jewish sources and Jewish thought. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. And I, again, I'm sorry for the for having to leave. No, no, me no, the that I, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. But um, yeah, I understand, you know, what you're trying to get at. You know, 
it is kind of confusing to me mm-hmm. because uh, I, I grew up in America. I understood who Jesus was. I never understood what he did, you know. Mm-hmm. I just kind of always thought he was a guy, long hair, beard, died, and then, you know, yeah, I guess came back. But mm-hmm. now that I'm looking into it, the the one thing that got me to look up um, is Jesus the Messiah was uh, in Ivrit, yeah. or uh, sorry, in Hebrew, uh, salvation is Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I was like, hey, you know, that's kind of weird. Let me look it in. Let me look into it. I looked it up, and then I saw a few videos of some dumb people that made no sense, and then uh, Jews for Jesus. Yeah, you know, Jews for Jesus. They do, a lot of them don't know like the rabbinic sources. Um. So the, our brother Scott wants you to look at Isaiah eight thirteen to sixteen. He says the Messiah will be rejected in his first coming, and it goes with Isaiah fifty three three to four. So it says, it's the Lord of hosts whom you should regard as holy. He shall be your fear. He shall be your dread. Then he should become a sanctuary. But both to the house of Israel, a stone to strike and a rock to stumble over and a snare and a trap for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Many will stumble over them. Then they will fall and be broken. They'll be snared and caught up. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. So I think we have a lot of imagery of the rejection of the Mashiach. And that's why we have an idea of Messiah, son of Joseph. I I would ask you this one thing too. And thank you, brother Scott, for the support. What's the uh, what's the main thing that holds you back from you know thinking that Yeshua is the Mashiach? What's like the number one thing? Um. Well, number one is, I guess, not how do I put this towards not going against my Judaism, yeah, but going into a different form of it. Yeah. If you understand what I'm saying. Of course, man. Of course. So there's Judaism, uh, Elohim, Adonai, Echad, okay. no one else, uh-huh. just him there. Yeah. And then Christianity, which is from what I understand Christianity is, yeah. is that Jesus, he is God. He's the Messiah. He's the son of God. He's one. And if you ask, I've asked Christians, like diehardy Christians or um, priests, and I said, okay, so where is God the Father, they say in heaven, and I say, okay, so where is Jesus? And they say he's right next to him. And I say, so isn't that two different people? And I say, no, they're together. So what I'm saying, we're, yeah. me and you are right next to each other, but we're not together. We're two different people. When I leave, I'll be gone, and you'll be here, and you know, I'll be at my house. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to me. I think I think that the mistake that you're making is that you are trying to put on the creator that which is part of creation, right? What we have to do is, when we look at the Torah, do we have this idea of a person being God, but yet separate from God somehow, right? Being yod heh vav but somehow not being the person of yod heh vav And we know that when you when you deal with the sound bites of Judaism, this is like, no, nah, what are you talking about, right? Either he's yod heh vav or he's not, right? But if we see, what's that? I said more or less. Yes. Yeah, so, I just always knew one, just one, Yeah, you know, Adonai, Elohim, Hashem, yeah. all of his different names. You know, Yah, I know uh, that's let's, what. Let's, let's do about. this. Let's do, let's go to Exodus 3. One of my favorite passages. Exodus is my favorite book. Let's go to Exodus 3 and let's just walk through this thing really quick. All right. So we're in mm-hmm. Exodus 3. If people want to see it, we're on YouTube also. All right. Big shout to you guys. All right. And then um, people on YouTube, big shout. We got uh, 70 people over there. We got 83 people over here. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's get those likes up, get in the algorithm. And uh, I appreciate the brother Ben coming on up, man. So you go to Exodus 3 1, right? And look at what it says, which is really, really cool, right? Moses, what is he doing? He's pasturing the flock of Jethro. Thank you so much for the gift, Shaw. Of Jethro, his father, Lord, the priest of Midian, right? And he's in the mountain of God, right? The heart Elohim. And then who appears to him? This is the angel of the Lord who appears to him in a blazing fire from the midst of the bush. The Malach Adonai is in the bush, right? Yeah. You with me? The flaming bush. I know. Yeah. Who's in the bush? Adonai. The Malach Adonai. The the Holy Spirit? Like no. What does the text say? Forget about Judaism. Forget about what you learned. What does the text say? The angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Mm-hmm. From the midst of a bush, right? 
the angel of the Lord. We keep reading Exodus 3. Moses said, I got to see this sight. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from where? Um, Moses saw the So Moses thought, I will go away. Why? Sent that he had gone away. Moses, okay. Moses, here yeah. I am. But who's in the bush now? Um, God. yod heh vav -Heh, right? Yeah. Why do you say yod heh vav -Heh? Because uh, I don't just want to say, I, I just don't want to th people to think, because there are people who have like different ideas about a second God that's not yod heh vav -Heh. That's why I'm, I'm trying to say exactly what the text is saying. That's why I'm saying that. Okay. Would okay. you rather have me say yod heh vav -Heh? You can say whatever you that want. Doesn't make, no, I, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, you know what I mean? So no, I don't trust yeah, me. I don't no feel worries. comfortable. Okay, cool, cool. Because we're having a good conversation. I don't want anything to like, you know, be a be a stumbling block for it. So yod heh vav -Heh yeah. is in the bush, and Elohim calls to him. God calls to him from the midst of the bush. yod heh vav -Heh, divine name, okay? The Lord, the divine name, saw that he turned to look, and God, Elohim, calls him from the midst of the bush, right? Then it goes mm -hmm. forward, right? Who's in the bush? The place is holy ground. Is the place holy ground because of an angel? No, this is because of God, right? The one true God. The one who's in the bush says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And then it's going to go on. The angel, the 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 Lord is going to say, I am that I am. He's going to give the divine name, Ehiyeh, Asher, Ehiyeh, right? Now, here's the crazy thing. When did the angel of the Lord leave and when did yod heh go in? Uh, let me reread. Yeah. Uh, when, right when God said, uh, Moses, Moses, here I am. You have, that says that, in, does it say that anywhere in the text? <clears throat> no, I'm on BibleGateway.com. You can tell me what yours book says. No, it doesn't matter. No, but what I'm saying is that there's no passage that says that the angel of the Lord leaves the bush. Uh, it says here that. God took over the angel and told Moses, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. What translation? Take off English. Again, just I just looked up Exodus 3. Yeah, so it doesn't... It, so is that like is that like a heading or something in the, in the in it? No, it just says Moses in the burning bush, uh -huh. uh, Exodus 3, uh, new international version. Okay, so either way, so the translation, what it says, 100% English, right? Um, Moses pasturing the flock, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of the bush. The bush was burning with fire, yet wasn't consumed. Moses turned aside, see this sight. The Lord saw that he turned. God called to him from the midst of the bush. There's no place in the passage where the angel of the Lord leaves and that the God of Israel enters the bush. Okay. So I'm just saying that this overlap between the being of God, right? being complex in person, we see that in the Torah even here. Uh, is it like a, are you reading off a website or do you actually have a Torah there? Uh, I have the, uh, so if you go to the YouTube channel, you could see it. But what I have on the YouTube channel, I have the uh, Hebrew up and then I have the uh, NASB up. And uh, the written uh, that's All right, Chris Claus. All right, Chris Claus, what are you saying? The NIV is a paraphrase not a actual literal translation mm -hmm. uh, i've noticed that in quite of other verses as well there's more of a paraphrase in that translation than a literal word-to-word -word translation yeah even here it doesn't even say that though right i mean it says i'm in the niv right now i've got it online and what it says is um the angel of the lord appeared to him in the bush right it was on a, it didn't burn up moses said i gotta see this thing why does the bush burn up when the lord saw that he had gone over God, to look, God called him from the midst of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am. Do not come any closer. There's no point where the angel leaves the bush, right? What I'm saying is, is that we see a, a complexity of God's unity even right here. Chris Claus, you want to drop anything? King Drac? No, nah, brother. I think you got this on lock right now, brother. Yeah. So there's another. Do you want to go to Yeshiyahu, uh, forty-eight, for me, brother? It's one of my favorite passages that show the uh, triunity of God's nature. Check this out. You guys believe in the Holy Spirit, or sure. just hundred uh, percent? So you believe the whole Trinity. 
For sure. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna show you right now too. So why aren't you just a Christian? Why am I not a Christian? No, like I mean, I, I understand. I think a lot of it is semantics, right? You know what I mean? A lot of it's semantics. Like, what do you mean, right? You know, Christian means messianic, right? Okay. Messianic means, you know, so it's a lot of it's semantics. So I have, I, I'm the associate rabbi of a messianic synagogue. So we have a safe Torah scroll. We have a Torah scroll. We worship on Shabbat. I circumcise my sons on the eighth day. I have mezuzahs on my doors. I wear tzitzis. I, I keep kosher, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of cultural differences between us, Christians and you know, messianics, but I have Jews and Gentiles in my congregation. And what I would, of course, yeah, but, but I'm saying, why, when you said I accept Jesus, why, okay, I'm going to do, you know, messianic Judaism, mm -hmm. like why still have that title of Jew or Judaism on you and, you know, do tefillin, uh, mezuzah, yeah. What, you know, yeah, uh, to Shabbat, like Shabbat yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah, because I think it's part of the heritage of a way to worship that God gave Israel, right? And, and those that joined them, right? Because if you go back to look at Abraham's life, when Abraham made souls in Haran, this is what the Torah tells us, that he made souls, right? He gathered strangers to him. They got circumcised too. They, they lived in that way, right? So I have Jews and Gentiles who walk in these um, identity markers of the house of Israel as covenant fidelity, right? But it isn't always the same when people are far from natural branches that they're going to be doing these same things. It's going to be different. You know what I mean? And we have a variety of expression. And so... You would see this even amongst the different streams of Judaism, right? You know, there are some people who are rabbis who are reform. They don't wear a yarmulke. They don't wear tzitzis. They don't even keep kosher, right? Um, so I just got called uh, a heretic by a guy who's, yeah, like, you know, reform rabbis I'm talking about, right? But Every reform rabbi I've seen has at least wears a kippah. Oh, this is now, though. This is now, though, right? If you go back, if you check it out, do you know that reform Judaism stopped doing bar and bat mitzvahs? Like, like recently or like this is in then? the late 1800s, 1900s. Then they started doing them again around the, I don't know the exact time, but around the 40s and 50s. So now they do them. But there, there was this departure. There was this departure. You get what I'm saying? My point is, is that there are many different streams of Judaism, right? You have Reconstructionist Judaism, people who are, could be very much halakhically Jewish, but they disagree with some of the things, right? You know? Um, so I think you can have differences of some of these things and in, in traditions that we do and how we walk in some of the Torah. But every Christian is going to be ethical. They're going to be uh, loving their kids, teaching their kids the word of God. They're going to be loving the Lord. They're going to be honest. They're going to love their neighbor as themselves. They're going to be commemorating the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah, right? And they're going to do it on, on Easter. But, you know, the early believers, many of them, even the disciples of John, celebrated um, the resurrection of the Messiah, the Messiah. On Passover, you know, there was a group called the Court of Decimates, and then there was a separation. And these things happen as time, as the believers become more Gentile. But we have to go back to what the core was, right? What was the core versus what did it become? And and it's not that what it became is bad, but what does God have for Jews? And what does God have for those that are not? And how are we still one? And what does it look like? Because we have Jews that are in churches. We have Jews that are in Messianic synagogues. We have Gentiles that are in churches and Gentiles in Messianic synagogues. Not that one's better than the other, but what is the Lord doing in these in these different communities? Well, I mean, really, I I don't know. You're kind of hitting me with something that is is really new to me. I never yeah. considered Jesus. I always just knew who he was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just okay, that's Jesus and. Um, and he's Jewish, I'm Jewish, all right, let's, you know, get on with life. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's good to think about it, right? And I think you got to be really careful, right? Because, I mean, there is a definite, um, there is the definite herd of, of the past by people who weren't really Christians, but claimed to be and all these other things. So I think there's a lot of herd of the past. I think there's a lot of people feeling like, oh, you know, you're abandoning your people and stuff like that. But if... Yeshua, Jesus, is the promised Mashiach, right? The one that was to come like Moses, that Moses said God is going to send a prophet after. And if he is the Mashiach, there's there's nothing more at the core of your Judaism but than to embrace him. Again, I agree with you, of course, yeah. you know. If I'm not denying that, you know, Yeshua or Jesus is the Mashiach. I'm saying if he is to be the Mashiach, mm -hmm. 
or is the Mashiach, of course, you know, you need to embrace him as, you know, the Mashiach. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Anything you've, else? Uh, Go ahead. You definitely, I guess, made me think. You, uh, I've subbed to your YouTube channel, so I'll definitely check out your videos. Awesome, man. Um, I'll keep in mind, you know, that Jesus could be the Mashiach. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you, really. No, my, my pleasure, man. And, and, you know, Ben, I think the biggest thing is learn the Torah. Like, learn the prophets, learn the writings, learn the Torah, right? Learn what it says there, right? And then when the New Testament says something, see if you can find that in the, in the, in the rest of the Tanakh, right? In the Hebrew Bible. Because if you can't find it, you don't have a, pro, uh, 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 a reason to, excuse me, believe it, right? But when we're looking at the claims of the New Testament believers, it lines up with with interpretations of the Tanakh that are kosher, right? So you know, and look, there have been there have been religious Jews, Orthodox Jews, that embrace Yeshua as the Messiah. There's been few and far between, but there have been, you know. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, it's, there's been many converts I've seen uh, to Messianic uh, Judaism or Christianity, Catholicism, or yeah. uh, you know, Islam and stuff. Yeah, and but I think I wouldn't want you to think of it as converting, right? Because Israel, exactly. yeah. Well, I think Israel is supposed to be a mamlechet kohanim, right? A kingdom of priests, right? Mm -hmm. Israel fails in the mission. Israel doesn't do good in this, right? Stiff necked people, we don't do it right, right? But one uh, with well, it's controlled by atheists. That's the big problem oh, with Israel right now. We would agree with it's this, a right? Democracy. Yeah, we would agree with this. But this is even before. This is in the Torah, right? Moses goes up, he takes too long, they make a golden calf, right? They start having a little nightclub at the bottom of the mountain, right? So, yeah. so you know, it's it's in it's in the um it's in the heritage of the people to be stiff necked and look all people are, right? It's not the Jewish people over anybody else. I think people are naturally stiff necked. So one of the things I want you to really do is, you know, that that being aside, is just when you are reading the new do you have you read the New Testament yet? No, never. Uh, yeah. I have it. In the library of my college, I know I can go grab it. Yeah, but I've never, I've never even read the Old Testament. Yeah. So, are, are you in the states, right? Yeah, I'm you're East Florida. Coast or West? Okay, okay. Yeah, you know what you do? Send me an email info at radarapologetics.org. Send me an email. All right, and I'll send you um websites so that you can access the he the uh New Testament in modern Hebrew, and it's very accurate, very accurate to the Greek. And you could even see the underlying Greek words, and you're going to see things in there that line up so much with the Tanakh. And all they're doing is translating it into Hebrew from Greek. And you're going to see the connections, and you're going to see how it's at home with Judaism. We're talking about priests. We're talking about Kohanim. We're talking about people from different tribes that are still saying where they're from, anticipating the Mashiach. They're doing Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. They're celebrating Hanukkah inside the Brich Hadashah, the New Testament. They're celebrating the Feast of Hanukkah. They're celebrating all of these things. They're keeping kosher. I mean, it's it's insane. You would, When you go to the text, you're going to see how Jewish it is. And it's going to be hard to say, oh, this isn't like at home with Judaism, right? Um, and, no, and of you're course. See. I, I know the New Testament, not as well as you, of course, but the the Last Supper, that's Passover. Oh, that was sure. Passover dinner, no? Yes, it was. So oh, Sure. They, they were Jewish. The, the Jesus was Jewish. The 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 apostate Paul and um, ah, there's so many names I don't even know. No, it's all but good, man. All, it's all, all good. Of his, all of his disciples, Jewish, yeah. the people who uh, you know, yeah, you know, called him uh, blasphemous was Jewish. Yeah, man. Uh, the only people that weren't Jewish were the Romans. Yeah, and 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 I think the big thing is that you know I'll get go back to what I was saying earlier because I uh, got off track, but. The idea is that Israel is supposed to be a kingdom of priests called Mamlechet Kohanim. Israel fails in the mission, right? But when you yes. read Isaiah 53, right? Read all of the passages Isaiah building up. It, Israel's a servant. Israel's a servant. But then what happens? Israel fails at the mission, right? And then one within Israel gets called Israel, and he fulfills the mission to be a orlegoyim, a light to the nations. And that's why we have billions and millions of Christians over history that have professed faith in the God of Israel. They know Moses, they know Abraham, they know Isaiah, not because of Rabbi Akiva, not because of uh, Rambam, 
not because of Ramban or any of the Mepharshim, the commentaries, not because of any Jew that existed later. They know him and worship the God of Israel and love the Tanakh because of Yeshua, Jesus, a man that lived 2,000 years ago and didn't travel more than 200 miles from his home. And with his disciples, they turned the world upside down and civilized all of society, those that have embraced the attacks, right? So I think that the, the one of the ma most major prophecies that we can see about Yeshua being the Messiah is how many Gentiles worship the God of Israel because of him. The God of Islam is not the same, right? But these Christians worship the God of Israel and love the Jewish people. And if they don't, then they're not, uh, then they're not uh, Christians. Yeah. I, uh, again, I accept your words. I think, you know, you're, you're knowledgeable. I have to look in to everything you're saying. I'll definitely tell you, uh, not text you, sorry. I'll write you an email. Yeah, for uh, sure. When I have... Can I go a little bit of information before you take off, brother? Um, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to jump into anything that uh, Rabbi said because I think that he said it beautifully. Uh, but you said that you subscribe to Rabbi Eduardo's channel, Radar Apologetic. So the two videos that I would recommend, now they're kind of my favorites, and I don't want to make uh, Rabbi feel bad because I do like all of his videos. I do, I do have a couple favorites, and this, these two are a couple of my favorites, and it might be good for you to look into them. This was two months ago. It's called The Messiah Has Come. You want to check out that live stream? And then the next one streamed one month ago. It's called Messiah, Prophet, Priest, and King. And those two, if you watch those two back to back, you get those information, a lot of information there. And I think it'd be very good for you to be able to look into something like that. Mm, all right. Yeah, I have them up right now. All right, Ben. And like I said, man, I'm available to you, my brother. And whatever you need, man, you bump into some ideas, you get some, you know, you got some things that you're thinking about. I'm available to you, my man. So just uh, shoot me an email. We can we can talk about it offline. All right. All right. And it's uh, info at radarapologics.com.org. .org. All right. All right, man. All right. Thank All right, you, man. Brother. I appreciate you, man. God bless you. No problem, man. Later. Till done. That's the beautiful thing about TikTok right there, Rabbi, is you get honest, actual yeah. people that come up and ask questions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You too, how you doing over there? Who's this? Uh, do we have somebody trolling on? Uh... Oh, Rabbi, one second before you get going. Yeah. Can you make yourself big screen again? Yeah. Only because it's hard to read your uh, screen when you're... Yeah. Cool. All right. I think we're in here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to find a better way to do this, I promise you. But, you know, we're good now. So what is up, brother? What is up, Word? How you doing, brother? Shalom, Rabbi. How you doing, Shalom brother? to you, brother. We do, we're doing well, man. God bless you, brother. So I just want to check over here. I think Lloyd is a little bit of a hater. So uh, if anybody knows it, we could say the Kaddish uh, for Lloyd. Yedekadav Yedekadash Shemei Rabba. Magnified and sanctified be his great name of the world, which he has created according to his will. And we just, uh, we put Lloyd to bed. Um, all my mods, if you get somebody talking crazy like that, just put him to sleep. You know what I mean? Lloyd needed a nap. You know what I'm saying? You have uh, mods over here on TikTok yet, sir? No, I do not. I do you not. Know, you, know, you can click on those three little dots and yeah. you can add them that way. Uh, and whoever you feel... Uh, you could trust uh, TikTok. You could do the same with in the chat as well. That's awesome. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll start doing that. I'll start doing that next time when things get a little bit better. Um, yeah, but Lloyd was saying some crazy stuff, man. We just get him on the toilet bowl, flush him away. He's gone now. You know what I'm saying? We don't gotta deal with him no more. All right. So, <laughs> so let's see what else we got here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Word King Drake, you enjoying the conversation, man? Oh yeah, it was it was definitely beautiful. Uh, he did seem like he was very humble. He came up, uh, you know, with some questions about uh, your beef with uh, the rabbi. Yeah. Uh, what's it? told me a singer? Yeah. And you, you you were able to got it into a good conversation. I'm just up here. I'm taking notes. I'm learning a lot. Appreciating the conversation and knowledge. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's not a personal beef, man. You know, we look YouTube. YouTube knows this. Big shout to Monica, RJ, and my wife, Mrs. Rabbi, is in the building, and and all the all the OGs, Gmail who's in the building, and big shouts everybody on YouTube hanging out with us. You know, we've got a nice viewership over there, but they know they can attest. We've prayed for Tovia Singer on live streams, right? Uh, big shout, Jeremy. You know, we've prayed on live streams for Rabbi Tovia Singer. You know, do we make fun? Do we tease? Yeah, he does the same thing. It's not personal. You know, we do pray for his salvation because I firmly believe, let me go on record saying that, and, and other people can come up if you disagree. I've gone on record saying that I firmly believe if if Rabbi Tove Singer gave himself to the Lord Yeshua, what does what does Yeshua say? What does Yeshua say? He says, any scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom, he will bring out of his the storehouse old and new things. I believe that if Tovia Singer did come to the Lord Yeshua, he would be one of the greatest defenders of the truth of the faith. And he will be able to do a, a better job than many have done, including myself, of articulating the gospel to the Jewish people. So um, I go on record saying that, you know what I'm saying? So my hope is that he would come to the Lord, um, Lord Yeshua, in that way, right? For sure. Amen, brother. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen, Lord. Also, for everybody watching, because I think we got 93 people here on TikTok. How many people we got over on YouTube, Rabbi? We've got. 81 people on YouTube. We've got 81 people on YouTube. We've got 94 on TikTok right now. Now, as far as I know, Rabbi, does Miss Rabbi have a YouTube channel? She does have a YouTube channel. It's called the Mrs. Rabbi. We don't have any videos yet, but I if you subscribe, she'll get them. You are looking I at it. <laughs> I think I'm looking at it yeah, right now. I think, well, I think she'll start making videos, man. Look, I think the difficulty with a thing is just finding that uh finding that uh vision. Big shout out to Zach and Leon Benner in the building. What's up, Elder Lee? Lord bless you, my brother. How are you? One of the elders of the congregation. If I could uh, give her um, a, an idea, perhaps, maybe she's already been thinking about it, but even the life of a wife of a rabbi. Yeah. That, yeah. that would be YouTube for. For sure, for sure, for sure. So we got a couple of algebra Peshatas coming up, brother. I know you're a believer. I'm just going to swing over to Brandon and see what we got here. And I'll bring up algebra Peshat, and then we'll bring up, uh, let me see. This was uh, Brandon. Let's see. Episode? Algebra, what's up, man? Welcome, welcome. And then we're going to let uh, Brandon of Pesh uh, Brandon uh, link up real quick. But uh, how are you, algebra? Hey, I'm doing pretty well. Good. Um, so I wanted to... Um, Discuss Zechariah 12, 7 through 8. Okay, uh, but you're, you're a believer, right? If I remember correctly, right? Yes, yes. Right. Let, me, let me check on Brandon real quick, and then we'll come back around, okay? And before, no. we, before we introduce Brandon, I just uh, we do have someone called Yehonathan ben Avraham. It's called the Bluish Catholic. <laughs> Thoughts on Hebrew Catholics. Hebrew Catholics are Jews who are members of the Catholic Church and keep living as Jews, observing things in the Torah. I think that is one of the... Um, the things that we should expect to that there would be um, Jewish Catholics that still embrace their heritage as Jews while in Catholicism, right? I think we should expect that. And I think we should see this over on YouTube. They're asking, but I think we should expect these different uh, brands and flavors of uh, of Jewish people in these uh, local communities, reflecting you know where they're at and wrestling with some of those things as Jews. So, uh, Brandon, what's up, brother? Are you a believer? Are you a Christian? Yeah. Anyway, I was just wondering one question, though. Are you a Christian, though? I am a Christian, just not like other Christians. Okay. I can't really put a label on my belief. Right. Do you disagree with some of this stuff mm -hmm. up here? Do you disagree with some of this? I would have to agree to disagree. Because so I don't can't agree. Sure. really disagree with anyone's beliefs because that's their beliefs. Okay. You know, I, I have to honor and love thy neighbor. I can't just judge them by their beliefs. Yeah, but I think I think but, we're called to, um, you know. If Jesus was the first flesh of God, what was Adam and Eve? Do you believe, who said that Jesus is the first flesh of God? That's... I was just wondering because I've been just scrolling and that's all I hear people arguing about. Who says Jesus is the first flesh of God like that? 
You'd be surprised how many people say that. So I even my girlfriend here, she, yeah. she's just there and watch me scrolls and just people are think, arguing. Yes. Yeah, so I think we have to I think we have to understand, do we see in the Torah, we dealt with this. I don't know how long you've been in the live, but can God take on a flesh? You know, we see in scripture where the God of Israel can take on flesh. And I think that might be a little bit ahead on where we are. Let's go back a little bit, right? Can God be seen? Yes. Okay. The Bible says no one can see God. And live. Unless you recognize him. Where does it say that? It won't say it in there. It's, it's a matter of perspective. Yeah, so uh, that's just my, my yeah, opinion. No, it's all good. Look, yes, I respect the opinion. God every day. You just don't know. Yeah, I'm. I'm not talking about like um, perceiving God in our daily life as His hand is on us, helping us through life. Right? I'm not. I'm not talking about seeing God in the creation. I'm talking about your eyes seeing God. Yes, every day. So, but can people see God? You've, you've, you don't even realize this. So how do you reconcile the passage in Exodus 30 through 20 that says that God can't be seen, that you can't see his face for no one may see me and live? You can't see light, truly. You truly can't see light, but you can feel light, can't you? That's why God can't be seen, because God is light itself. We absorb it. So hold on for a second. Hold on through us. So what did God mean that you cannot see my face for no one can see me and live? In Exodus thirty three twenty, because God don't have a physical form like me or you. So why in Exodus? That's why. So why? In, let me ask you this question then. Okay, said so God doesn't have a physical form. So why in Exodus thirty three eleven nine verses earlier, it says that God would speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Well. When you say face, does it have to really be the face of a human? How do you talk to your friends? It could be the face of a plant. How do you talk to your friends? I communicate with frequency or vibration to create a sound okay. to communicate. Okay, yeah, so I get that. I use light but, to so create a vibration. You use light to create a vibration? All right, man. All right, so, so how do you reconcile the passage where it says God cannot be seen and then it says that God does see him and speaks to him face to face. Well, that's just that's, that's the interpretation, though, because a face can just be any face. It don't have to be. No, human. it's panim panim. All right, let me do this for you, okay? So we go to let's go to another passage, and then brother Chris Claus, anybody else could jump in, but let's let's drop this off really quick, right? Let me go here. Okay, Exodus. I mean, you can have the Holy Spirit in a tree, and it can be standing there talking to you. So Exodus twenty four. Guess what? Okay, that's what so, Moses did. No, it says he spoke to him face to face. Right? There's even other areas where it says that he doesn't speak to anyone else the way he speaks to Moses. Right? He spoke now, to the Spirit. Check this out. Exodus twenty four nine. Okay, look at what it says. Moses and Aaron, Nadav and Avihu, and the seventy elders of Israel went up, and they saw. The God of Israel with their eyes, not a perception, a vibration of light. Um, there was this was an actual seeing of the God of Israel. And can you can you articulate? Can you articulate that God can be seen and not seen and have a resolution from Scripture and a verse that would uh, release the tension for us? Well, see back then. The interpretation was a little hard to to interpret. Do you have a verse? They're not going to be able to really have a way to it. I I don't go by scripture. I just see it for uh, what it is. So we can't really have they a don't, conversation, right? They don't. I mean, if you don't believe in scripture, we can't have a conversation, right? Now you're passing judgment. No, no, I'm, I'm passing a judgment because passing you don't judgment. you don't because the criteria is the scripture. We're talking from what the Bible teaches. You don't We're want to talk to about the Bible. Of faith you don't want to listen to me for a second, Brandon, Brandon. Hold on for a second. I can. You can judge other people who are walking in wrong. As the Bible tells me to go preach the gospel. <laughs> One way you're not. Listen to what I'm saying to you. The Bible clearly tells us that God can't be seen, and then God can be seen. 
I'm telling you, how do you reconcile this based upon what the scripture says? You're saying you don't go by the Bible, you go by your own feelings. So therefore, you've gone against the Bible by making yourself your own God. Yeah, but you're sitting there saying that God can't be seen and can be seen when I've been literally saying the entire time that God is seen every day. Yeah. Well, look, you don't want to deal with scripture, so I get it. I get it. All right, man. We'll see. We'll see you next time. You know, when you want to talk about scripture, let us know. Let us know, my man. All right. And we'll uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Because you, you don't have to talk about scripture. That's what we're here to talk about, my friends. So. You have a wonderful night, Brandon. We'll pray for you. <laughs> Pray that the Holy Spirit comes to you, convicts you. Yeah, that's why. Knowledge of the true God to you. Algebra, what's up? You're up. <laughs> One way, you ain't want him, man? You ain't want to talk to that dude? No, man, I even told everybody on YouTube, I ain't going to let you pass him off. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Look, we're, we're here to talk about Scripture, man. You know what? Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Algebra. Okay. A phone, so I couldn't deal with that guy. You oh, know? it's all good. It's all good. Oh, Radar, I did mention to you earlier uh, that if you did want the crazies to come up, do you remember the name that I told you to invite up on your stage? I don't remember. The word and I. Oh. <laughs> do you, do you notice on your stage, and you notice what we just got? Yeah, oh, man. It's all good. It's all good. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Algebra, what you got for us, brother? Yeah, so I wanted to know if uh, this is a good question for rabbis. Um, Zechariah 12, 7 and 8 um, seems to say that um, God will save the tents of Judah first before he saved Jerusalem and the house of David. And um, like I can read it from the Chabad. Um, the Lord shall first save the tents of Judah so that the boasting of the house of David and the boasting of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall not increase over Judah. So I wanted to say, like, who is the savior of the Jews in that case? Like, if it's if it's not coming from the house of David. Um, but um, in verse 8, um, it says, like, on that day, the Lord shall protect the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, like, it mentions the angel of the Lord also um, before them. So, like, that's yeah. Yeah. a question. Yeah. So I think, you know, look, you can always go to these verses, right? It's clear that the scepter would not depart from Judah, Genesis 49, 10. The rabbis interpret that as the Messiah, the Shiloh figure, right? And the scepter not departing from Judah. All of this is about the Messiah. Rabbinic text is is pouring over that. But we also have ideas within rabbinic literature where they actually refer to the angel of the Lord as being the God of Israel, right? And so we have passages like that, you know? So it's really important that we are we are navigating these things in a way with integrity and also just saying what the rabbis also say about the passage. Now, a person could always say, well, you know, the rabbis say this somewhere else that contradict that. Well, yeah, that's why we don't go by rabbinic literature. We go by the Bible, right? Because the Bible's consistent. Cool. Sounds good. I mostly read Rashi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think like he's saying that um, to boast over them, to say you were only saved only because of us. So I'm saying like, if, if it's the house of David, that's going to be saved afterwards. Um, how can, I mean, I, I don't think we have a problem, um, as Christians, but I'm, I'm just wondering because the Messiah is depicted as a, as a savior, as a warrior savior. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's all. No, I think it's good, man. I think it's, I think it's good. There's this, uh, there's this passage in the Mechilta. And, you know, there's this passage. I'm going to try to turn my camera around so we can see this. I shared this before, but I want to do it again. There's this passage in the Mechilta. And this is the Mechilta, the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Yochai. And this is, uh, what is this? This is 122, okay? I don't know if you can find it online at Safari. I had to buy it through Logos. But you can buy it through Logos, like $100 for the whole set. But look, he's commenting on this passage of the Red Sea and the angel of the Lord being before them. And look at that. When they went down to the Red Sea... God's presence was with them, as it says in Scripture. The angel of God, which had been going ahead of the Israelite army, moved and went behind them from Exodus 14, 19. So the rabbis, the rabbis say that the angel of God carries the presence of God. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Yes, yeah, so that's good stuff, so.
Let's see if we get anybody else up and then probably wrap up out of here like in the next five minutes. Word or not, Chris Claus, King Drake, you guys want to drop anything? We're going to probably do another one tomorrow. Yeah, the only, thing you, I want, the only thing I want to say is if y'all haven't uh, subscribed to Radar Apologetics on YouTube, you should now. And I know that everybody's doing a wonderful, wonderful job at tapping the screen. I can't even co I can't even comment on the people over on YouTube because we've got over 90 likes. And I believe we have, yeah, like 80 people. So we got more likes That's than awesome. we got people. Yeah, people. for sure. But yeah. we can say in the next five minutes, we should be able to reach 30K likes here in TikTok because we got 90 people, y'all. Show some love to Radar Apologetics. Show them that we want to see him back tomorrow. Appreciate you, guy. We'll drop a little, you know, drop a little, a little Toby. High heel, purple shoes, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. That's our boy Toby Singer, y'all know. All right. Hey, right though, I do want to ask you. Uh, Talk to me. I think you said something about um, the logos, um, like the uh, the thing you look up your your references from. The application. What do you mean, brother? Yeah, the app. Like the application you had told me about the logos where you can find it in the Hebrew and it compared to like the New Testament. Software. The app? Oh, I mean, you I see, did a... You get it on your PC. Yeah, so I do a... a do you want to know the apps that I use? You had told me one. It was logos, but... Yeah, I, 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 I use logos. And I didn't want to... Yeah, I use logos I and buy the wrong thing. yeah, I use logos and accordance, and you can buy different packages. So what I'll do is, I what I can do is I can uh, you send me a message and I'll send you some packages about what you want to know about. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, okay. I didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't want to buy the wrong. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. I'm gonna let this brother Best Dallas up. He was here. Uh, he was here earlier. Oh, he just dropped down now. Probably dropped down at the same time. I tried to get him up. Uh, it's like when anytime I have questions on like my microphone or any type of stuff for editing or anything. Uh, Rabbi is the first one that I, I send a text to. Um, I, I send them all my information and I wait for the go ahead. That's all I yeah, do. For sure. For sure. And I still got to check out that last one you sent me too. So yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to get up out of here. We're almost at 30,000 likes. We appreciate it. I wanted to get this brother on best Dallas. Oh, Albie's in the building. I got to send shout out to my brother, Albi. Hey, Radar. God bless What's you. What's up, brother. bro? God bless you, brother. God bless. God bless the panel. I'm just here for support, man, if you don't mind. No, I appreciate that, brother. We're about to wrap up right now, but we're going to be doing another one tomorrow, Lord willing. And, you know, love to have you up here, man, as we have people talking, you know, different stuff. Sounds you know? great. Love I to have this. Past half, I caught the past half hour of those. Man, yeah, really awesome. stuff, man. Yeah, and then you can go back on YouTube and re-listen to it because it's on YouTube also. Beautiful. All right. Hey, hey, Radar. Can can I just read a quote? Um, if you if you have time, I know. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Family, man. Let's do it. Then we'll get about here. Uh, all right. So Algebra was talking about reading Rashi. Yeah. And um, I, I I wanted to let him know. Be careful because Rashi uh kind of changed some interpretations. Oh, for sure. He was he was a vicious anti missionary. So if you're going there thinking that you're being thorough. Trust the Holy Spirit and don't go yeah, for sure. to an anti-missionary. Yeah. But, th but I'm going to read a quote. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm going to read a quote from a very uh, distinguished Jewish scholar, uh, Professor Erwin uh, Isaac Jacob Rosenthal. Um, he was born in Heilbronn, uh, Germany. Um, he escaped the horrible mustache man, yeah. thank God. Um, he was a... Uh, uh, professor in uh, Hebrew and North Semitic uh, epigraphy, um, very distinguished scholar. And this is what he writes about Rashi. He says, he, Rashi, was not out to instruct merely to increase knowledge, but by instruction to strengthen the faith of his generation and to foster their hope of redemption and their belief in messianic fulfillment. We must remember that he was active in an atmosphere that produced the Crusades, and he saw with his own eyes what that meant for the Jews. Many a comment on a passage in the Pentateuch, in Isaac, I'm sorry, in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, or the Psalms is concluded with the statement, 
that his interpretation is according to the plain sense and serves as an answer to the Christians. Yeah. In general, he tried to combat Christian interpretation, yeah. even if he had to depart from the traditional exposition. This is clear from his interpretations of the following, Psalms 9 and 10, or 21, or any of the servant songs in Isaiah 52 and 53, or in Zechariah 6, 12. There yeah. can be little doubt that except he was forced to reject the rabbinic exposition on linguistic grounds, um, as in Psalm 9, uh, it was the contemporary Jewish Christian controversy which led Rashi to an interpretation in opposition to the rabbi. So he yeah. was dishonest in his sure. interpretation. Yeah, I, I, that's that's a fact. You know, I mean, we know that. We know that for sure, man. And, you know, but I think he's just reading it to do some apologetic, right, and try to see how the rabbis interpret stuff. I don't think he's doing it because he believes Rashi. I think he's a believer. Okay. Yeah, I think he was just using it for an apologetic. But it's good to know that Rashi did change the interpretations of a lot of things, and many of the rabbis have done that as well. So let's swing over. Um, just see if there's any questions over on YouTube, and then we'll get up out of here. No questions. Appreciate everybody hanging out on YouTube. Oh, there was one question about how was Purim in Israel. Yeah, I don't know. You know, so I did talk to a couple of people who I know who live in Israel, and um, I didn't hear anything about Purim being, uh, being like that, you know, being a problem in Israel, so. So, all right, man. Well, I appreciate the panel. We're going to get up out of here. YouTube, I appreciate you. We're going to try to try to figure out how to do this a little bit better. What's up, Truth Cartel? Big shout out to you, brother. We just, uh, we about to wrap up here. But we're going to keep this thing going. And we'll, we'll see y'all next time. And But as always, YouTube, TikTok, no matter where you're at, if you do not know Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, you do not know Jesus as your Messiah, King God, and Redeemer, please come get to know him today. He cleaned up my life. He made me whole. He's the only reason why I have anything good in my life. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. And you can know him as well. May you repent and embrace him, and you will see your life completely transformed, full forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. All right? May you all be blessed and have peace from the Holy Spirit. And we'll see you next time. YouTube panel, Word King J, Chris Qual, Study Show, Albi, and all the others that came up. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord bring redemption to Israel and the whole world. Amen? Amen, brother. Amen. 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 All right. We'll see you next time. Thank you all so much for coming on through. Peace. YouTube, thank you all so much for hanging out with me while I figure out how to do this thing. I appreciate everybody coming on through. If you guys do have uh, questions, thoughts, uh, concepts, new way that I did this. I'm trying to find a different way to do it to make it more uh, live stream. And I appreciate you guys coming on through. I know it's difficult, but let you know, I got 1300 views over there. I had 100 people watching over there. I had almost 100 people here. So we'll probably do another stream tomorrow. And I really believe that we impacted that 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 young Jewish man Ben, and we do pray for his salvation as well in the name of Messiah. Sure. We'll see you next time. Grace and peace, blessings in the name of Messiah Yeshua. Peace.